first thing I did Friday afternoon was I stopped by the Economy Museum at the St. Louis Fed. They are only open from Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So this is a government building, so of course you have to behave yourself. Or they'll probably kick you out, and depending on the extent of your nonsense, they'll probably press charges. So behave yourself, mind, you know, mind your business, obey whatever rules they say to obey. But when you walk in, they take your ID, they look through it, there's cops there that would do that, and then they have you go through the security checkpoint. It's similar to the one you go through at the airport at TSA. So they have you walk through it. The only difference is that you don't take your shoes off. But if you have a bag, they have you put the bag in a little basket and move it through it. And then they also have you walk through the security uh, machine. So after you do that and you're going to the, they point you to where you can go to assess the museum. And when you go in there, there's other people there that will tell you, where you can take pictures and where you can't. Also remember, this is the actual Federal Reserve. So the museum is only a small portion of it. So they are very careful and they also treat it very seriously. And then you also have to be careful while you're in there. So once you go in and you, know, you go past the place where you can take pictures or not, there's like a, the $1 million cube where they, it's like a thing where they're like, oh yeah, how does a stack of a million dollars look like? They usually encourage people to take pictures here. You can take pictures here. If you don't want to, then that's fine too. But when you go into the museum, it, well, after you do the picture thing, then there's the entrance into the museum. Once you go into the museum, there is a little video that you can watch if you choose to, and then you can proceed into the museum. It's a very interactive museum. You learn about a lot of things you learned in economy class, opportunity cost, you know, like trade, um, scarcity, all those things. You see them there. It's very interactive. I guarantee that you will not have a dull time in that museum unless that is really not your cup of tea at all. But I guarantee that you will not have a adult time in that museum it's very interactive it's good for both kids and adults and it's something really cool to check out and they even show you how to they have like interactive uh spots in the museum where you can identify fake money and real money and where you can create your own dollar deal it's very cool really you should check it out when you are in st louis so from what I understand from going through the museum, the Federal Reserve is in charge of a lot of things that are, that affect the economy of a country. So they conduct monetary policy to promote price stability and you know uh, sustainable employment. They also do a lot of economy research about what is going on in the country economically. They are also in charge of destroying bad bills that, you know, if they are deposited finally into the Federal Reserve, they are in charge of taking those bills out of circulation and destroying them. Um, there are a lot of, they destroyed a lot of bills after Katrina. There's a, there was a picture in there that showed like cash that looked like it was burned by fire, but it was actually water damage. So they do a lot of, you know, outreach with low income communities. They also serve banks demand for currency and coin, and they supervise a lot of the banks in the country. And this is just a little of what they do from what I saw in the museum. From what I read at the museum, there's 12 uh, districts for the Federal Reserve Banks. There is the one in Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Richmond, Cleveland, Chicago, Atlanta, St. Louis, Minneapolis, Kansas City, Dallas, and San Francisco. 
the districts this is starting to sound a little like hunger games but the eighth district is st louis and the st louis federal reserve bank serves uh covers arkansas and some of illinois and indiana kentucky mississippi missouri and tennessee okay let's find out I am a, I'm an adult. I'm no longer a young adult. Hmm. Uh, maybe if they had more options, like half and half. So half on some vacation where I can find some deals. But I won't splurge. I will splurge in hotel because safety first but i'm sure i'm able to find deals to make it work but i'll still put away some things oh gosh i'm overthinking this okay so i like how interactive this museum is Resources. Get a job, make dinner, go to the gym, pay for long care, quick job, money. Okay, so I guess. Oh, okay. Slide. So, which means you have less time, right? Make dinner, still have cut some of your time, right? Go to the gym, pay for long care. <laughs> okay. yeah. my first stop for the night was third degree glass i had signed up for a class to make a bug um, it was a glass blowing class but i thought i'll actually get to blow the glass after i do it but i was a little disappointed but it was still a cool experience i don't even know the name of the insect i made all i know is that I looked at some pictures on my phone and I came up with an insect and I made it. And after you make it, they give you like a little glue to like glue the pieces together. And you just lightly glue them together and then they take your name and they tell you when to pick it up because they'll blow it themselves. And they leave a little space in between the, the glass that you glued all the insect features on and the supporting glass at the bottom so that they can put the little insect legs themselves but i i wasn't <laughs> sticking around in town so i left a uh, an address for shipping oh my god shipping was expensive it was more than i think it was ten dollars or something or either ten or twenty dollars <laughs> i don't know but i wanted it so i paid for it but if you're in town just stick around and just come and pick it up because they have you pick it up the next i think it was next friday so one week after they blow it so doing the glass blowing event meant that i missed at least 30 30 minutes of the janet jackson concert and nelly opened for her and in this world i guess you have to give some and lose some uh, the event finished at 8 p.m. and that was when the concert was starting so I still had to drive from third degree glass to Hollywood Amphitheater so that was about 25 minutes so I completely missed Nelly's set and it was a big bummer y'all because I was I didn't even know he was from St. Louis at his home city and I missed him go ahead go ahead shame me shame me that's fine but i'll catch nelly next time hopefully he performs somewhere else where i can catch him but this time around i had to sacrifice him and do the glass blowing and then when i finally got there thankfully navigating into the air was easy whoever set up the logistics did a good job but going in and going out of the concert i don't know if it's because i came late but i thought going in and leaving 
was very very good like it was very well planned you had to like once you get to the the venue it took a little bit of driving for me to actually find the actual venue but once i found it it was packed it was crowded but the people that were checking people in the people that were organizing the traffic they did a wonderful job it wasn't it wasn't as a very stressful navigation like many concerts that you go to but the only thing about the hollywood amphitheater is that the, the seats are kind of small and it's kind of tiny in there and there's no breaks in between the uh, there's no shorter breaks in between the the sections so if you're like in section g it can go from anywhere from 20 to 40. so you're like walking through like it's not like 20 to 30 where you like walk through 10 people before you find your seat now you have to walk through 20 people and be saying excuse me excuse me excuse me before you find your seat so but it was fine it was genuine but another thing about the hollywood amphitheater is that again i don't know if it's in the whole of st louis when you go to concert i definitely did not experience this when i went to beyonce's concert last year but the hollywood amphitheater i don't know if it's because it was an outdoor venue when you buy a drink it doesn't matter if you buy five drinks they have to open up all your drinks before you take them with you so you can't just buy a closed drink and walk in no 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 no. they open up if you buy five five cans of drinks and they had they had the water in cans too so if they have if you buy five cans they'll open up all the five cans so going to the bathroom was a little tricky because you take a drink with you and you have open drinks uh that part i wasn't as enthused about but every other thing was wonderful and another thing with the hollywood amphitheater is um their bag size they have a very they have like a little block in there where you put your bag on and if it's even a little bit inch a little bit of an inch over that block the lines on that block they they make you either take it back to your car or they tell you to rent a locker which is like probably 10 or 20 dollars to rent the locker and put your bag and then after after the concert you take your bag thankfully i parked around there so i had to go put my bag back in my car um again if it was if it was in the in the email i didn't read all of the email so maybe i missed it but that part was the other i understand the security part so i didn't really make a big fuss about it but it was it was a nice concert she performed almost everything we were singing along everybody was singing along we were dancing intermittently because you know janet is not really a skimpy clothes person she was fully clothed and we were all sweating everybody in that audience exchanged sweat one form of sweat or the other we were all sweating and our goddess janet was also on the stage sweating and her dancers i love janet's dancers they have these very they all have their own attitude and it's this very um sassy attitude but in a very cool way like I love her dancers. They gave everything was 10 out of 10. And there was something about this Janet's concert. This is my first time going to a Janet Jackson concert. So I don't really know um, whether what I'm saying is whether it applies to all her concerts. But it's looking at, you know, her perform, you can see that she's just doing this out of pure love for her craft. Like it very much gave it gave hard work it gave perseverance it gave all the wonderful things that we associate janet with but it also gave a i don't have anything to prove to anyone kind of vibe and not even not in a lazy way just in a in a this is me way you know like in a i i live and i breathe this thing i can do this in my sleep kind of way and it was so cool and so refreshing so you know congrats to janet for you know putting on this tour like she's she's just she keeps on going and i love 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 that for her anyway it was a wonderful concert and i enjoyed it
Saturday I had a very late start because I, I was tired. I slept in. So I didn't get up until um, until around 1 p.m. And I finally left my hotel around 3. So I only had two hours because the pond tour was Saturday and Sunday, 9 to 5. So Saturday I just went to, um, I think I only went to 3 because they were just the three that were in clusters. And then Sunday, I was going to drive home, so I decided to visit the rest of the ponds. And I also went to, I think I, I went to about seven on on Sunday, because a lot of them were very close to each other. So I didn't go to the ones that were far away from each other. I only went to the ones that were really close to each other. And I learned a lot about ponds. I learned a lot about, like, the little lines that they put in just to like deter the herons from coming in and eating all the fish. I learned that, you know, a lot of them have the scarecrow heron to like scare away the heron from eating the fish. And then there's also like another man that had a very, you know, very like he's a very advanced system. He uses sprinklers to like chase away the, the heron. The only thing they said that they don't have a, a way to control is the mink so the mink that will come and try to eat all the fish they don't have a way to like control them then they also have um a, there was this guy that his pond was very wonderful but come to find out he was a pond installation guy so he did this for a living and there was another lady that had like a very tiny pond and she was just saying that she just really wanted a pond and she didn't care how tiny it was. She just wanted one in her backyard. And she was saying that she set it up around 2009 and then it cost like somewhere around $5,000 each, like 5000 ish to set it up. But right now from all the conversation that was happening with a lot of the people at the tour, Right now, the prices have like skyrocketed, but they were still encouraging people that you can start small and like slowly build it up. And it was it was a really cool thing to like learn about ponds, learn about you know how to set it up. Just um, just hear people like talk about their pond journey and how they expanded did you know that you know depending on how many fish you have in the pond um you know it can it can determine how much how big the fish grows i did not know that and they have the a lot of the fish in there kind of it's kind of like a balanced thing for the ecosystem in the pond like a lot of the fish feed on the algae and clean up the pond and keep it clean and this is in St. Louis. So a lot of the people there say that they don't even have to do, you know, take out all the fish during the winter. They leave it in there. And a lot of them, not all of them, some of them do the maintenance themselves, but a lot of them have like the pond guys, the people that actually do that for a living, come in and like help install it and also help. It's like having clients and being on a ret on on retainer like after you install it you also come and check on it kind of thing and help clean it and help do other things that need to be done and help install more stuff so it was a very cool experience and something very cool to you know see how people are excited about it about having it it was nice <laughs> You want some? Saturday evening, I just decided to play it very cool. I went to the forest park. Um, I bought a little, like a little ticket for Shakespeare at the park uh, for As You Like It. And it was a cool experience. I just basically chilled, watched it. It, it, it definitely, they definitely added a lot of the Gen Z-ism a lot of new new 2024 lingo into the into the play and not just the lingo like uh, mannerisms too into the play um i did not mind it but it was it was interesting to watch and 
I just basically snacked on some popcorn and you know the, the little concession concessions things they have on there and just watch Shakespeare and after that I went home and then Sunday I did a little bit of a the tour the water getting tour as I told you guys and I went to a ramen place and got some ramen to go and I drove home. <laughs>